This is where it gets bad. Up until him had had a pretty nice, there was a, you know, a ceremony requested money from me was through Facebook and it was a thousand dollars. Uh, so with great sadness I post this video. I've been advised by the police to stay off YouTube, uh, live anyway, for the next week or so while they investigate. Now I understand there's been many reports sent to my local police. I know that one woman that used to be a mod of mine is on her last legs or last chance. A number of them are in serious danger now of being arrested and fined. This is not a civil matter, it's a police matter now. What's happened in Manchester? Well, Most of the young teenage girls who are obsessed with this um, Adriana Grande, right? Concert. Suicide bomber killed 22 people, including seven children, and injured 100 others. So teddy bears were the, were the symbol of that tragedy. It was on the radio today, and I was driving, and, and I had to pull over. A um, mother whose son was killed by this bomb going off with the nails and and the bolts and the strap i won't tell you this woman's name i don't, I don't even want to mention it. she's a mother of a young man that was killed by this bomb murdered by this bomb she made her teddy bear out of steel out of the, out of the things that this man had used to kill those children so while she waited she collected these nuts bolts and screws and made the teddy bear what she was waiting for to get these 17 screws nails and bolts back made into a heart and the heart welded on to the outstretched hand of the teddy bear the heart of the ones that were in his body the heart in his hand to signify hope true story and that <laughs> terry what and i was thinking of that as i was driving home and i was thinking of the trolls and the nastiness in the world and the and the pain. Now, if you're a troll, listen to me now, hoping to make films and hate on me or hate on anybody, how can you, how can you have such hate in your heart? You know, I don't, I don't live far from Manchester. And I know damn well that when the bombs were going off, no, so nobody's going to stop to start picking up bolts and screws. And also, when it's all over with, let's say she didn't pick up the bolts and screws at the moment it was happening, which would be rather stupid, since her son was killed. You don't go around picking up bolts. And that's evidence. So if she actually went back afterwards, and, and you say that she... Over years, she picked up the nuts and bolts. Did she pick up any nuts and bolts? Or were they the nuts and bolts from the bomber, which you then say in your video? Because I would presume that, firstly, there was a crime tape to stop people going in. Secondly, it's evidence. And thirdly, they're not going to leave the nuts and, bo nuts and bolts around for people to pick up. I don't believe your story, Alan. I googled. I googled the story and I, I, I worded it in so many different ways and if you'd heard it on the radio it would be somewhere on Google so if I'm wrong I'll apologize but if you want to show me the proof find me a story that has that lady in when she had the son killed with the shrapnel and she took the shrapnel from his body and made a, a heart to put on a melted down shrapnel that was made into a teddy bear
you know guys watching this narcissists make up the biggest stories they have to because they're desperate to keep their fake persona because if they lose their fake persona they might as well be dead that's what a narcissist is they will create the biggest stories that you think are so nice and so believable that's to get your empathy and that's to make them look like they've got a heart and what you do then is you start to deny the stuff that you've thought about oh i thought he was bad but actually he's quite a nice person it cancels out just because they've been nice after they've been nasty does not negate the nasty and that's what narcissists do they will do something really good because then you start thinking oh maybe he's a nice person maybe i was just being too hard on him maybe i just doubted him and that's how they play on your emotions and your cognitive thoughts don't let them do this i hope this video is helping you learn about narcissism in a way that might be useful to you in the future because this is what i like to do is try and get narc awareness out there and this is my prime way of doing it debunking somebody showing what somebody is capable of in a social platform um to ad and michelle that's us i have two letters from christopher october the 28th he wrote and november the 3rd he wrote to us uh on their way since saturday so they went out on Saturday. In other words, he's written us some letters we're going to get tomorrow, right? Yes. Future faking represents a very cruel hybrid of manipulation, lying, and mirroring. So why do narcissists future fake? Well, as always, it's a way for them to keep their steady source of validation and approval just nearby without having to do that much work. It's also a way of exerting their grandiosity because so much of what they sort of future fake about is really quite grandiose. Uncles, and the reason for the letters is because of the COVID shutdown at uh, Wisconsin. We believe, we don't know where the letters are now. Mm. Evidently, I mean, it's been closed down, including the post office in the prison. So I'm afraid there's going to be a delay. As soon as I get them, I'll tell you. But don't ask me every day. As soon as I get them, I'll tell you. They definitely are real, but I don't know where they are. <laughs> but as soon as I find out, I will. So the narcissist gets to use their grandiosity as a tool of manipulation. And narcissists do manipulate so you don't see how insecure they are or how really ineffectual they are. The fact is, they cannot make the things they promise happen in the moment. It's promising just... they'll make it happen down the road. So what does future faking do to you? I can promise you it's not very good. It messes with your head because it actually harnesses your hopes and uses them against you. The narcissist taps into what matters to you and then promises it to you. You may very well stay in whatever kind of relationship you have with them, not because it feels good, not because it's healthy, but because you really do, because of the future faking, truly believe that it's the pathway to the future you want. Ultimately, narcissists are the greatest illusionists and magicians and masters of disguise and deception. Future faking is a hell of a trick. Hocus pocus. I'm going to make you look over there. I'm going to take your dreams and wishes and promise them to you. And you will believe me. And then poof, they will never happen. Uh, one troll tonight said, I'm waiting inside your house. I'm going to kill you and put you in a body bag. And I've taken the picture and I've sent it off. They might be just nice old ladies thinking they're running me down. They're inciting people to murder. Oh, yeah, I'm not making that up. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Alpine, Alpine Stroll. I know where you live. What do you think of that? And who's supporting them? A public figure, Junior. Junior's supporting these people to do this stuff.
they're trying to get me killed. Okay, so the text from this person called Alpine Stroll, who was debunked by another channel, has uh, basically even proven that he was watching a racehorse that afternoon run and the racehorse was called Alpine Stroll. Then all of a sudden a person called Alpine Stroll sent him a text threatening his life, which he then took off and deleted off the, I think it was Facebook apparently or YouTube. I don't know which one it was pasted on, but we will never find out because what happens is people put up things like that and they remove them fast. They'll screenshot them and they remove them because they know that it could be tracked. So that I find pretty disgusting with what you're doing there, Alan, is you're framing people who have done nothing to you. You are framing people to be wanting to take your life. You are framing people who haven't done anything to harm you. You're making drama. You're making yourself to be a victim. And you're basically putting other people who are innocent in the frame of being threatening and trolls and wanting to take your life. I find that disgusting, Alan. I find that absolutely disgusting. I'm Chair Detective, under siege here in my little town. Threatened, bullied, harassed. Still would be told that people are making six hour videos about me. I'm all for free speech, but it's not free speech to attack my family. You know what they've done to my family? Do you need to understand how it feels to be harassed to the extent where you're afraid to go at your door? Where you're wondering if there's going to be a knock on your door? Have you ever felt that? To laugh at me or make fun of me or, or damn me? They do what they like with me. Talk about this idea of how narcissists are so good at drawing you in with their sad, sad stories. But everyone out there knows that over time when things can get quite dark, they have a pretty strong victimized kind of stance. And if things aren't going their way, they're very quick to blame the world and feel like a victim themselves. When they get caught, when they get called out, they'll flip everything around on you and make you the bad guy. And you'll also notice the PR campaign where they go into image management to make you think that they're good people. Sometimes it's difficult to know who the abuser is and who the victim is. If they like to use the pity ploy, which is coming in and pulling on the heartstrings of your empathy, then they play poor me is they're trying to extract narcissistic supply. They need to manage their image. They need to manage their public image. So they want to look good. They want you to look bad. They want to get something from you. This comes from their sense of entitlement. They feel entitled to your time, energy, money, or other resources. <laughs> I can't put it more bluntly than that. So the three things the narcissist fears the most are exposure that defy the false self, defiance that tell them that you know that their false self is not real, that you're, that you're not enthralled by them anymore, and then ultimately the loss of narcissistic supply. That's you. You're not even a person to them. You are a thing to them. They can replace you. It's very quick and very easy. Them maintaining their vain idea of who they are in the eyes of you and in the eyes of the community is hugely important to them. If they fail to convince you of their God-like status, of their specialness, their uniqueness, their amazingness, if they fail to convince you of that, they become deeply anxious. So they can really only do a dynamic where somebody is applauding them. I want to talk about baiting. Now, narcissists will bait. Narcissists will do things and they will say things that will upset, offend, it will just make somebody come back with either anger or some kind of reaction, a negative reaction. For instance, the Rusex, Nicole Atkinson, they're all reacting to what Armchair's doing. Sorry, Alan. And then Alan's pointing at them. Why are they getting so upset with me? What have I done? I haven't done anything. Well, hopefully this video has showed things that what you've done. Now, whether you care, I don't, don't care if you care. But people who are watching, hopefully that they will see some sense into why he does these things. Because to me, he wants the attention. To me, he baits. To me, he pokes and prods people until they react. 
and he's created his little drama in his own little fantasy world. Once that happens is the predator, the abuser, will point the finger at you and then when you react to it, you're the bad person, you're the abuser, you're the crazy one. And this is what happens a lot and this is what's happening a lot is people are reacting, people are coming back with stuff they see that's wrong, that's bad. But the thing is with a narcissist, they will never critically think, they will never look within themselves. They don't have that thinking in them. You control your world, Alan. I watched a live the other day, every single negative question or comment was deleted by your spanners within a second. And that's another thing that narcissists can't stand is somebody questioning them. They comment cleanse. They will not have anyone say anything negative about them because they can't stand the thought that people dislike them. Again, they, if you've noticed people watching this, he reframes everything. They reframe everything. If anything is said to them that is hurtful or blameful or accusing of something that they've done that is true, they will reframe it so that they don't have to deal with the pain of actually thinking, wow, I'm not a good person. They can't deal with anybody criticising them, so they reframe it in their heads. They reframe it so that they don't feel, you know, oh, I've done nothing wrong, it's you. You're the one making videos. You're the one hating on me. They don't understand the reason why maybe somebody's hating on them because they don't look within. There's no critical thinking there. So yeah, what you just described is basically how the devil gets you to do his bidding. The oppressor pushes you and pr provokes you until you respond in some way and then you become the bad guy. It's a double whammy and this is a big trap. See, narcissists will twist the narrative. Narcissists will hide behind intent. They live in fantasy. They live behind and hide behind ambiguity. They hide behind context. They hide behind jokes. See, narcissists live in a world where they can jump ship. They sit on the fence so they can easily twist the words to make it sound like, I didn't mean that, I meant this. They squirm twist out of things when they have to get to take responsibility or something they'll twist the words and make you out to be crazy instead and that's another thing why YouTube maybe haven't taken you down yet Alan because narcissism is invisible to the eye of a beholder that doesn't understand narcissism they watch your videos and they don't see they don't see what you're actually doing because it's not obvious. That's the trouble with narcissism. It's not obvious to the normal eye. But the people involved, the people, the victims involved, the people who know about narcissism, the people who've been victimised by a narcissist, coercive abuse, you name it, people who've been through it can see it like we've got radar glasses on. And we can see what you're doing. But YouTube can't, they watch your videos and they can't really see because it's time. Narcissists work through time, drip, 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 drip. You've had three years to drip feed your audience, three years to slot in the odd lies. YouTube can't watch three years of your video. YouTube aren't sitting next to a psychologist that can say, right, you see what he's doing there? Can you see what he's done there? They don't have the time to sit and analyse what crap you're talking out of your mouth and the subliminal context twisting and the ambiguity that you live in. They don't have time, they don't see it. Because narcissism cannot be seen by people who don't understand narcissism. That's the world over. That's why this community of narcissism is so hard on telling people about it, trying to be narcissist aware, trying to tell people that they are out there. Jekyll and Hyde's, wolves in sheep's clothing, YouTube don't see it, but they will one day, because that's why you think you're safe. That's why narcissists think they're safe, because they keep on hiding behind fake personas, lies, dog whistles, or aim a conversation at the victim, but only the victim sees it. No one else does. That's called dog whistle. 
So it's very hard, but one day, Alan, one day your channel will come down and people will notice and know what you've been doing and who you really are. In public, they do this thing which is like dog whistling, and, and, it, and it has a meaning to certain people. When you're in a group of people, and this could be out with your friends at a bar or whatever, and they'll say something that everybody else at the table or in the room is just like, it was just like a normal thing. It didn't mean anything. It's a dog whistle. Only you can hear it. Nobody else can hear it. It just sounds like regular words to them, nothing out of the ordinary, but it's driving you insane because you know they're abusing you. You know they're digging, they're provoking, they're trying to get you to react. And then if you react, everybody's like, oh my God, what's wrong with her or what's wrong with him? You know, because they didn't get it. They didn't, they didn't hear the dog whistle. Respond to that. You could look like you're the one going crazy. That's why it's called crazy making. They exploit people. Narcissists exploit and use people for what they can get from them. If they can get validation, if they can get money, if they can get ego, if they can get fame, this is what they go out looking for. They'll go from job to job, job to job. They'll try all sorts of different things. And when that doesn't work, they'll rip off that chameleon costume and then go and do something else completely. They go around just trying to find people who will be taken in by them. You've planted yourself in the middle of this horrendous murder and you think it's funny and you laugh while you're talking about dead people. You're smiling. You're creating a cult of people with their own problems. People reach out to others for reasons. Every person has a reason to cling on or to follow or to join. It's not for, it's not because most of them like you, it's because they have a reason to be, they want to be in a community for whatever reason. They feed each other. Alan, you're feeding people with supply. You're feeding people with drama. The haters watch your channel. There's so many people watching your channel, Alan, for different reasons than you think. These aren't professionals. These aren't good people of the world. The good people of the world are the ones who are against you. The good people of the world are the ones making videos trying to get you to stop. And you keep saying, oh, it's not working. You'll not stop me. You'll not stop me. Why? Why would you think like that? Can't you see the pain that you're putting people through? No, no, I forget. You can't, can you? That's why I've made this video, guys. So please share this video because, like I say at the beginning, it's actually not on my channel because I didn't want to give him the duping delight smile when he thinks, oh, another channel using, you know, my name to get subs. Please share this video so people can see what a narcissist is and work it out for themselves. If they think that Alan Vinicom is a narcissist, a covert narcissist, malignant pathological liar. Work it out for yourselves, guys. Do the research in people that you pay. Do the research into people that you give your heart and your soul, that your, your money to. Your duping smile continuously is there. Whatever you're talking about, you are laughing and you are smiling. The default setting of, a, of an empathic person is to be empathic. There's no empathy in your face. When I'm talking about dead people or when I'm talking about something seriously, I'm not laughing because it's not a funny thing to bloody laugh about. Also, one thing I've noticed, Alan, is that you have milked the Watts case for so long now. And I know, and we all know, and you know that you keep saying that, oh my goodness, there's a lot of other channels doing this. Why am I being picked on? Why is, why, why are the channels doing the what's case, but I can't? They do it with respect. A lot of other channels are going with what's out there. They're not narrating a completely new story. They're not lying. They're not making conspiracy theories up. They are not taking the whole scenario and the whole context of everything that you see on TV, everything from footage, from cars, from shadows, you know, from police interviews and dissecting it to the point where you take it apart so much and then you put it all back together again in an order that you want. 
You twist the narrative, you flip the script, you create new stories where there wasn't any and the stories that are our true, you twist the ambiguity, the content, the context, you name it, you twist words, you look at stuff in a different way, you tweak the timeline and you are twisting Ronnie's words at a completely different timeline of what you're, it was the most bizarre thing to watch. And what happens is people think you're amazing. You're in a fantasy world of your own making and you keep on milking this, whether you're hurting people or not. And I've gone over this many times in this video and it's probably getting tiring, but I just, I've never seen somebody do what you do so much, so badly. The case is done and dusted. Chris Watts is in jail. You making money out of the Rusex, out of the Watts, out of Nicole, out of every single thing that's going on around this, the neighbours, the dog, the trees, the lights, the flashing, the this, the shadows, the the bushes, the I, I just I'm I'm speechless at the amount of effort that you go to to create your persona and to keep it going for longer by twisting the narrative. Basically what you're doing is you're fantasizing, you're creating your own fantasy that you live in and I find it disgusting. And because of their deeply ingrained lack of empathy and entitlement and arrogance and contempt, the odds of change in them are pretty close to zero. Taking responsibility for bad behavior is overwhelming and it can result in shame for them. So they don't own it and they don't address it. Thank you for watching.